Hello, good morning. I still haven't been back to the Thames since the lockdown, um, but I will be going soon. I'm back at work, so I've got less time. Uh, but I've had a few invites from friends, so soon I hope to be posting a real mudlarking video again. Um, but in the meantime, I thought it would be fun to show you around some books connected with mudlarking, which you might like to purchase or read, um, show you around my mudlarks library, uh, and then I'll also list um, underneath in a link a series of links to a lot of free books and resources that you can get online and that you can download for absolutely nothing uh, to enjoy and help you identify your finds. Needless to say, there is a large literature um, on mudlarking and finds identification. Um, the first being uh, interviews by Henry Mayhew, a Victorian author um, who spoke to um, the Victorian poor in London. Um, the real mudlarks, the original mudlarks, um, who did it to keep body and soul together to earn a living. Uh, not like us these days, who just do it for fun and for historical research. Um, you can read edited conversations with the London poor um, in a book by Belinda Hollier, where she's edited some of the conversations. It's called Costa Girls and Mudlarks. But going forward into the modern era, probably the first book published on mudlarking as we would recognise it is by Ivor Noel Hume, who was a London archaeologist and mudlark, and it's called Treasure in the Thames, and it was published in the 1950s. Um, it's quite a hard book to find, um, but the good news is there is a download where you can read it online, and that'll be in the links included. So not so great in terms of illustrations, um, general finds from the River Thames, archaeological and some that he's found himself, um, but a very interesting book and really the earliest book on mudlarking. Um, his more general book, All the Best Rubbish, where he discusses a whole range of finds uh, from dump digging, archaeology and uh, mudlarking, is called All the Best Rubbish, much more easily obtainable. And this is the book that I read many years ago and it inspired me to have a go and go mudlarking and look what happened. Um, he's also, he went to work um, in America um, where he's obviously dealing a lot with post-medieval archaeology which was his forte. Uh, and this book is useful, The Artifacts of Colonial America by Abel Noel Hume, um, because a lot of the early stuff was imported from the UK so there's, there's a lot of, again, the illustrations aren't brilliant, but there's a lot of useful information about a wealth of subjects there. Um, his real love was pottery, and there's this lovely book, um, which is a fantastic mixture, like all his books, a great mixture of uh, brilliant scholarship and archaeological knowledge um, but put into a very human framework, so very readable, not dry at all, very interesting, very readable. And uh, if you like pottery and can afford to buy this huge volume, then I would definitely recommend that. Um, a lot of people have written accounts um, of mudlarking, and I'd say they're all worth a read. Fantastic. Um, London in Fradberg. Fragments, sorry, by Ted Sandling. Um, this one is particularly well interesting, um, illustrated uh, with his finds, and so it's very helpful, very readable, very knowledgeable. Um, I can only spot one obvious mistake among the pottery finds, um, which I will see if I can find. Oh yes, uh, Roman greyware is actually Victorian stoneware. But apart from that, I would say it's an excellent volume uh, with lots of finds illustrated in colour and very readable. Um, London Mudlark on Facebook, uh, Lara Maiklam uh, has written this book. She very kindly signed it for me uh, and I mentioned in the back with the pottery. Um, if you want some illustrations, buy the paperback version because the hardback version has none. Um, but she is a very good author and really discusses 
how mudlarking affects her personally. So as well as what she finds, you know, if I wrote a book about mudlarking, it'd just be a dry list of what I found. This is a very human account of mudlarking, how it helps her soul and her spirit, uh, how she looks at the wildlife, uh, what it really means to her. So very readable. Um, I got this for my wedding anniversary yesterday uh, from Lisa Woolett, uh, born and brought up in London, but now lives in Cornwall. Uh, so she's more of a beachcomber now. Um, and this is again a wonderful, beautifully photographed book on some of the things she's found mudlarking and beachcombing. And again, um, very much into the sort of emotional aspect of it. She's also researching her London family history, so it's very personal to her, very readable. I would recommend that indeed. Uh, I was very excited to find, while I was researching this little film, um, that there's a new book on mudlarking coming out next year in the Shire series by Jason Sandy and Nick Stevens um, about uh, mudlarking, uh, so that we can pre-order. It's not coming out to next year, uh, but that would definitely be worth a read when it comes out. Um, a couple more I could mention. Uh, Mudlark River by Simon Wilcox, uh, which again is quite a historical look into London's uh, river and the archaeology of it. And Treasure Hunting on a Shoestring by Mick Moran, which includes mudlarking uh, and lots of other finds that he's made as well. Well, here are a few nice books, uh, which include many things on my hit list. Uh, Coins of England, published every year, so the earlier editions, not that expensive, but beautifully illustrated with life-size photos of coins, none of which I've ever found, but there we go. Um, so that goes right through from ancient, through medieval and uh, modern issues. I suppose there are a couple of modern ones I found, like a 50p um, or something like that. But anyway, a lot of coins on my hit list there, but great resource for identifying your coins. Um, again, something I'd love to find, uh, but no luck yet. Uh, Pilgrim Souvenirs and Secular Badges. So there's two great books, one uh, which comes covers medieval finds from London itself. Uh, and there's some great artefacts here. Um, maybe helpful as well if you just find a small piece of one that you could help, you know, um, match it to a complete object here. So um, pilgrim badges, but also secular badges. So retainers badges and other things there. And Michael Michener done a good work there on beautiful pilgrims badges, none of which I've ever found. Um, but it's on my hit list or ampullae for holy water. Some great things there. Um, this book, lovely book, toys, trifles and trinkets base metal miniatures from London 1200 to 1800. Uh, very popular in the post medieval period. Um, normally considered as toys for children, but again, often found in, in little bits, um, but this might help you to ID. Um, quite commonly found on the Thames are uh, pewter utensils like plates and porringers, uh, clocks, whirly gigs, which were toys, um, which you put string through, uh, stiff clock faces there, uh, none of which I've ever found. But maybe one day, I've got the book about it if I do. So that's another one I'd recommend as a very good addition to your mudlarking library. Those who watch my videos know that my passion is pottery. Um, so I've got one or two uh, books on pottery here, um, either by factory, uh, or by form, so teapots, um, delftware drug jars, pharmaceutical wares, uh, stoneware, tin glazed urbanware, uh, different factories, and then different periods going from the prehistoric period, Anglo-Saxon, Medieval, Roman, 
Um, so obviously this is where I turn to. Uh, a lot of these books have the problem of just illustrating the more museum worthy pieces and tend to ignore the sort of humble working class pieces that we're more likely to find on the Thames foreshore, uh, which is why I wrote my own book. So if you want to look me up on eBay um, under Richard Henry Pottery, then you'll find I've done a little guide to the pottery of the Thames foreshore, uh, where hopefully some of the more common uh, everyday pieces that you might actually find rather than museum worthy objects uh, are identified and discussed. So there's a link also to that at the bottom of the video. And even with all these resources and books, if you're still having problems identifying your finds, um, then head on to Facebook. There's a couple of very good online forums where you can post a photograph and you will have experts falling over themselves waiting to ID your finds. Um, I put a link below, um, but there's the River Thames, uh, Mudlarking finds and Thames foreshore finds are two groups which I recommend. So don't be embarrassed. Um, post a picture and even if it's a bit of old drain pipe, we don't mind. Um, but it is limited, please, to things which were found on the Thames foreshore. So hope to see you there, have a look at other people's finds and join the discussion.